Hey guys, Masaius here, and today I am back for day number 24 of r slash nuclear revenge. And today I have two stories lined up, two fairly lengthy stories, they're like long but not extra long. Wait, oh, it's just the fact that I'm almost done with nuclear revenge is just wild to me. Anyways. Let's get into these two stories. We'll start with this one. Take away our heat and electricity during the winter. Enjoy losing your job and paying thousands. I, I regretfully got an apartment with what in what is, in my opinion, the worst landlord ever. This man, I will call entitled D or ED, has the audacity to call himself a good person in court. Let me fill you in. I got an apartment shortly after being released from prison. Happy that someone was going to give me a chance to improve my life. This was clearly not the case. All was well for the first few months. Then winter hit and the heat went out. It took three days to get ED to even answer his phone. By that time his voicemail was full of complaints from his freezing cold tenants. He told me the law gave gave him reasonable reasonable time to fix it. We went two more weeks with no heat using our stoves and camping in the kitchen in our respective apartments. When ED got his electricity bill, he attempted to raise the rent on the apartments. Obviously he was not allowed by the city, so he refused to pay his electricity bill. Thus denying us all of de denying all of us heat at all. This is where my OCD kicked in and I went into uh, went full research mode. I cited every law in regards to federal, state and city landlord tenant laws and rights. I found so many violations, it was no longer funny, but scary. I studied building code, I studied the condition of all of his apartments. This was easier due to the fact that I was I was either friends with his tenants or had gone there to repair damages caused by frozen pipes and electrical outlets due to failing due to shoddy wiring and so forth. ED had peeved off all of his tenants. Every last one was peeved to the point where they wanted to testify against him in court, but couldn't due to the financial hardships the living conditions we were in had been causing. I formulated a plan to get him to repair the buildings he owned. But ED had his own plan. January 2nd at 2am I was awoken by the smoke detectors in the whole building going off. I quickly ran to the back hall because no smoke was in my apartment yet but I was on the top floor. I opened the door and was greeted by a thick wall of smoke. I quickly ran downstairs after shouting for my girlfriend at the time to get out of the house quick. I pounded on every door and screamed fire. I got as many people as possible to evacuate but the floor with the fire was no one, no one was answering. To my knowledge, contained children. So I panicked. At this point, the fire department was there and breaking in doors. I evacuated. After the fire was out and the investigation had started, I witnessed ED give the tenant of the apartment's sister an envelope containing an undisclosed amount of cash, which was visible to anyone nearby. Two weeks later, the results were released. Arson. The tenant had used hairspray to start the fire and hid the evidence in a hole she punched into the wall. The very person who had given who had given money who had been given money by the landlord. Ironically, she was the only tenant who had paid rent in the whole building because she had started moving in two days prior. I had not known she was a she was now a tenant and her sister and kids had moved out the day before. I looked at ED and told him, I know what he had done. And I was not going to rest until he lost all his buildings. I then began asking his tenants for their stories and their interaction with ED. This, were, this is where things got real. He had been accused of everything from ripping off employees, theft, grand theft auto, bank fraud, and so much more. I formulated a new plan. I sucked up to him and made it known I am a computer tech. 
ED had a few broken computers and some printer and network issues. I was in. We worked on a deal. We worked a deal on payment for back rent. He, I knew he was not good for his word, but this was all part of the plan. Once I got his passwords and logins, I copied his entire HDD to my portable one. I copied all emails in his uh, business account and printed his financial records on my Wi-Fi printer, which was next door. After I fixed his computers and network, I then went home to review my newfound evidence. It was enough. More than enough. I contacted code enforcement with all of the violations of code for every building, including the illegal electrical installation in his new office without permits or even an electrician. He was immediately investigated. That night, I found a seven day notice to quit on my door. My, room wa my roommate was worried, but I filled him in on the plan. Remember, I studied all those laws and rights? Well, we get to court and I open with your honor. I have clear, I have proof of a clear violation of the warranty of habita habit Habitability <laughs> Act. The eviction was thrown out and he was forced to repair my apartment with me still in it immediately. The next month I was given another fiction, eviction notice. Still, he is losing money due to the fact I was teaching his tenants landlord tenant rights and the laws associated with it. ED kept losing his court dates and kept being told to fix stuff and was continuously fined by the courts and the code enforcement. He was sinking fast. Back to that fire, the woman living there was arrested for arson and charged with two court counts due to the accidental electrical fire on New Year's Day turned out to be ruled intentional. So the hairspray was in reality temp attempt two. He was under investigation for conspiracy to arson and other charges. I wasn't done yet. We went to court again for my, for my non-payment of rent. I won again based on the Landlord Retaliation Act because I contacted code enforcement and could prove this blatant retaliation and the judge didn't even listen to ED. <laughs> Needless to say, spending the winter without heat took a toll on us tenants. We bought electric heaters and informed the power company that the landlord had shut off all power to his building and was required to the ten was requiring the tenants to pay for their own power. Well, apparently his illegal wiring caught up to him. He had wired apartments to run off each other and the common areas were now attached to wiring in every apartment. This put ED in a rough position as local law says it's the landlord's responsibility to supply power to all common areas. This means his shoddy workmanship and illegal wiring prevents him from legally dis disconnecting the power. The power company turned on all the power and locked his ability to shut it off until the wiring of common areas was repaired and separated from the apartments. This would cost thousands. Thousands we knew he didn't have. ED was panicking. He kept losing in court. People were legally withholding rent. He couldn't shut off services and the fines were debilitating. He kept blaming his tenants and refused to repair things. One by one, the buildings were condemned and ED was required to pay for relocation of his tenants by law. Well, he didn't. He couldn't. He was arrested for attempting to sell free houses the city confiscated from him and for selling one that was condemned. ED got what he deserved. He lost every building he owned, got charged with all kinds of fraud, and was investigated for other crimes I am still I am still unaware of. But it wasn't done. He caused a lot of suffering. I gave his financial records to the IRS with all the internal memos and everything I got from his computers. I also provided the local authorities and code enforcement with the same things. ED was so screwed. I have I have since gone a new apartment and everything he owned has been taken by the city, state and IRS. I have not seen ED in three years and all of his properties have been bought by someone new, repaired and have all new tenants who are happy with their new landlords. The old, ten the old tenants got better places with decent landlords. And what about our wonderful entitled dick? He is serving multiple sentences for the crimes he has committed and is already not getting an out anytime soon, 
yet the investigations are not done, and the charges keep coming. E.D. is somewhere in some prison, regretting being this tenant. Moral, don't be an E.D. unless she wants to meet the evil moral enforcer. The other, OP's landlord won't pay for electricity in the winter, ends up paying thousands and goes to jail. I think I have read this story before. Like, I'm pretty sure I read this story before on, or heard this story before on, a, I've either heard it before on on the channel Dark Fluff, or I've read this story before in Pro Revenge. But I don't remember exactly where. Let's just move on to the next one. Almost kill someone we respect and put the blame on us. Lose life as you know it. Hello, I have been joining the uh, pro revenge, nuclear revenge, entitled parents, malicious compliance, and I don't work here vids on YouTube. And they just brought back all kinds of memories, so I thought I would post a few. I'm posting this one here, as I seem to notice that nuclear revenge tends to not only have devastating effects, but sometimes questionable means were used, and that's and this story fits that perfectly. So anyway, it is the early early nineties, and I was in my twenties, working as an electrician with my best friend. We were known as the Hawkeye, me, and Trapper slash Honeycut, old Mash reference team of our crew, and we kept everyone on the job site laughing and in good spirits. Even in the worst of times, we were working new construction of a of an elementary school and had been on site since the very beginning. We were two weeks away from punch out. That is where construction is complete and inspections are done looking for any flaws or corrections that need to be made. Anywho, the superintendent over the whole construction site was a major jackhole and, uh, and had been since day one. He was new and wanted to make a name for himself. It was his first time running a job and he made several mistakes and always blamed others. Remember me mentioning worse at times? He constantly cut corners to save on costs, which would turn it around and buy him later on. He had gotten several good hands fired. We would run good contractors off the job and bring... Oh, he would bring... He would run good contractors off the job and bring his bring in his friends to replace them. The drywallers and the painters were a couple of examples. And I had heard that he had half of the plumbers run off and replaced with his crew as well. He was a total jackhole to us electricians as well, wanting us to work overtime but not willing to pay it. He was really wanting to keep us behind so that he could charge the company fines. A uh, small company finally bought in a couple of extra hands, which peeved them off even more because we were starting to catch up. By the time Christmas rolled around, we were ahead of everyone else, and as mentioned, the job was nearing punch-out status. Two weeks before Christmas, my friend's car. Since I was his roommate, I carpooled with him as I didn't have my own transportation, lost its rear end, and we, my best friend and I, missed two days of work repairing it. The Jack Holland superintendent saw this as an opportunity to and told our f job four men to have us fired, if not run us off the job job site. He tried to kick us off properly property himself, but since he had no legal reasons, tried to get our job four men run us off, saying we were unsafe and a distraction keeping others from getting any work done. His argument was dismissed since, as I mentioned, we were ahead of everyone else. It was the day before Christmas Eve, uh, last day before we could go off for the holiday, before we would be off for the holiday. We, he knew our supervisor, who was vi visiting that day, was definitely afraid of snakes. Earlier that day, a small rattlesnake had been found hibernating beneath a porter john that had been moved and killed. Gotta love Texas. The jackhole superintendent had brought a cooler full of beer for his crew for when the day ended. Well, our supervisor made his rounds, inspecting our work and talking to our foreman, since we were his last stop, and was ready to leave to end his holiday. The superintendent told him to have a beer and pointed out the cooler. A supervisor opened the lid to the cooler and had a heart attack. Literally, the dead snake was inside. 
The EMTs finally cleared him. The supervisor was telling him that he saw me and my friend at the cooler earlier that day and blamed us. Of course, we had been under the foreman's nose all day, in which half of it was with the supervisor, and our supervisor was aware to the jackhole's tricks, so he did not give in to the demands of us being fired. Now for the nuclear revenge. M my friend and I did not take kindly to our supervisor being harmed, nor to the blame being pinned on us. Do to us what you will, but do not harm those in whom, in whom we have respect. Like I said, it was the last day of work before the Christmas holiday. We had Christmas Eve and Christmas off. After work, my friend and I drove to a bait shop and picked up the gallon of catfish, Charlie. For those who don't know, catfish are attracted to really foul odours, and catfish Charlie was one of the stinkiest baits used for fishing for catfish. I mean, one whiff will turn your stomach, and you will turn green. A cast iron stomach is what you need not to just lose your lunch. We drove back to the school, and ran back to where the air handler unit was. For those who don't know, the air handler is the main environmental unit for of commercial buildings, AC and heating. We opened up the main intake duct and dumped the whole bucket of catfish Charlie and closed the duct back up. For good measure, we also added about a pint and a half of water and stirred it and stirred into a nice thinner paste so that it would not quickly dry out. I did learn that even though long time smokers, I could hold my breath for nearly a minute and a half and my friend two minutes, probably due to him being ex-military. Neither of us could see for about 10 minutes due to the tears, and it was a miracle we didn't lose the contents of our stomachs. <laughs> Even in Texas, uh, winters can get cold, including on the coast, and this was a particularly particularly cold winter, staying in the 20s and teens uh, Fahrenheit. It even snowed on Christmas, not enough to write home about, which maybe happens once every 10 to 15 years. Remember, this was Wednesday, and like I said, we had the we had Christmas Eve and Christmas off, and then the weekend, four full days for that stink bait to stew in in the running heating system. Come to find out later, the jackhole superintendent had his crony and his cronies had forgotten to lower the main thermostat before leaving for the long winter holiday and weekend. The thermostat is normally lowered to 50 Fahrenheit when closed during clo cold winter or weather and raised to 82 Fahrenheit when closed during warmer. Yet, yeah, it was left at 75 Fahrenheit for that whole weekend. It's Monday and my friend and I pull up to quite the scene that morning. Martians on all fours seem to be littering the grounds of the school. <laughs> Projectile bombing spewed everywhere. There was an ambulance and three fire trucks on the scene with five men in full rubbers and clean respirators running around everywhere. All of the doors and windows of the school were open with giant fans venting the buildings. The air was putrid and we turned green upon exiting the vehicle. Oh, holy F! <laughs> was all I could say. What the hell happened here? A boss was sitting on the hood of his car next to us, his breakfast artfully painted on the ground. The jack hole and the superintendent and a couple of his guys were in the back of the ambulance on oxygen as they had taken the full brunt upon opening the building. Okay, let's tell the damage. The smell um, had permeated everything. And I mean everything. The school, besides cafeteria, was fully carpeted. The drop ceilings were of the fiberglass type as well as the insulation so they absorbed the smell. The walls that weren't cinder block were papered and not and not painted. Since the inner duct work was the insulated type on the inside, all of that had to be replaced as well. Needless to say, tens of millions of dollars in damage. Also a fence had to be erected to prevent such a thing from ever recurring again. Come to find out the superintendent had skimped on the insurance and pocketed the money. Needless to say, it fell to his company to cover all of the costs. All of his underhanded dealings came to light in the end as well. Needless to say, he lost his job and was arrested, losing his contractor's license forever. 
Abbas never said anything, but I am thinking due to the way he grins at us after that day, that he had his suspicions that it was us. But he never turned us in, and did put in for us a big raise, since the smell didn't permeate any of our stuff, and our jobs were complete anyway. The plumbers, electricians, and pipe fitters were spared from ever having to enter that mess. Yeah, nearly 30 years, I guess the statutes of limitations are well up, so I could safely tell the story. I, wanted, I want to admit that I do feel ashamed for doing it. Being young and dumb and all is a great excuse, but a good contractor service went bankrupt and a lot of jobs were lost in the end. From what I hear, the school still has a foul odour, even today. Well, about 18 years ago from what I heard. Yeah, we expected to stink up the place, but did not s expect such a result. During that time in the contractor construction field was a major boom. One could quit or lose their job and be working at another company within the hour and generally earning more money. Uh, also brought to my attention in the comments, true EMTs cannot clear someone from a heart attack. I should have worded it better. The EMTs did stabilize my supervisor. He refused to go to the hospital wanting to be home for Christmas. Since the EMTs could not force him, when they got his files stabilized, they left. A week later, an ENG, EKG did confirm the heart attack. He was admitted to the hospital for, for double, double bypass surgery. Okay, last edit. Hope, ho hopefully, last edit. A lot of people would want to know if the school still stinks today. I call my brother who lives down there and I'm no longer in the area. I learnt that my friend lied to me 18 years ago when he said it still did. My brother said that five years after the incident, after many complaints, it was torn down and rebuilt. TLDR, corrupt superintendent prick on a job site scares my supervisor, causing a mild heart attack, so he caused a huge stink, literally, and get him thrown in jail and he loses his license. Basically, pranks going all wrong. <laughs> I just prank all gone to uh, extreme. <laughs> nope, my mouse is not working. I'm going to end this episode here now. Links will be in the description to my main channel and also the second channel. Along with links to the playlist and the last episode, go check them out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when the next video comes out. A ding, a ding, and the mad scientist, mad scientist out.